Let me show you something. We've been working on this lander for three years. It's a very large lander. It'll soft land in precise way, 3.6 metric tons onto the lunar surface. The stretch tank variant of it will uh, soft land 6.5 metric tons onto the lunar surface. Let me give you a little tour. The deck is designed to be a very simple interface so that a great variety of payloads can be placed onto the top deck and secured. In the Davit system, which is inspired by naval systems, you can see it over here, is what's used to lower things off of the deck onto the surface of the moon. We have here as an example a very large rover. And by the way, even though that's a large rover, this vehicle can land four of them simultaneously on the surface of the moon. On the left-hand side, you can see our star tracker and so that this vehicle can autonomously navigate. On the right-hand side, you'll see an optical communication system that gives us gigabit bandwidth back to Earth. It's a laser that transmits data back to Earth. We also have X-band for 10 megabit radio. Why are we using liquid hydrogen as our fuel? One, it's very high performance. Second reason we're using liquid hydrogen is because ultimately, we're going to be able to get hydrogen from that water on the moon and be able to refuel these vehicles on the surface of the moon and use them. And we use it three ways on this vehicle. The liquid hydrogen, of course, is the fuel for the descent engine, so it powers the descent. But we also use the boil off, so when liquid hydrogen, when heat seeps in through the tank walls, and liquid hydrogen gasifies a little bit, it boils. And that very cold gas is passed around the liquid oxygen tanks to prevent the liquid oxygen from boiling off. And then after it has cooled the liquid oxygen tanks, it is uh, pushed into an accumulator where it then powers hydrogen fuel cells. And we chose hydrogen fuel cells for this vehicle rather than solar cells because we want to be able to survive the lunar night, which you can't do with solar cells. The lunar night is two weeks long. It gets very cold. Landing gear. They stow in an upward configuration so they can fit into the seven meter payload bay. They deploy. They're designed, the very wide splay angle is designed so that we can land on an incline on the moon of up to 15 degrees, which is a very big incline. We have flash LIDAR so we can do terrain mapping. Now that we have mapped the entire moon in great detail, we can use those pre-existing maps to tell the system what it should be looking for in terms of craters and other features and it navigates relative to that. Thank you, Marina. This is the BE-7 engine. It has 10,000 pounds of thrust, and it has very deep throttling capability. That's critical for a lunar descent engine, because this lander, when it's fully loaded with fuel, weighs 33,000 pounds. When it's done its descent burn, and it's just about to land, and it's all, the fuel is almost gone, it weighs less than 7,000 pounds. And so to provide the right amount of force on the vehicle with the engine, you need to be able to throttle it way down as the vehicle is getting lighter because it's burning its own fuel. One thing is when this vehicle, there are payload bays here on the sides, and when this vehicle is in orbit around the moon, as a kind of extra mission, a bonus mission, it can launch small satellites into orbit around the moon so we can do certain kinds of science. You see it happening here. So we're deploying a number of small satellites before we do our landing. You're gonna see the uh, a set of burns that will take us down to the surface. The primary burn is six minutes long. This BE-7 engine will be firing for six minutes. It's a very long burn. The, we verticalize about a kilometer above the surface. You can see that happening now. A very precise landing, again, using those flash LIDARs to detect uh, surface features and using those for navigation. Now we're gonna watch 
as the Davit system, which is inspired by a naval system, deploys a rover, Look at those long shadows. The shadows are always long on the poles of the moon. Wow. <laughs> People are very excited about this capability to soft land their cargo, their rovers, their science experiments onto the surface of the moon in a precise way. There is no capability to do that today. Here's an, a picture of a pressurized human rover. And it's really interesting, when you can land precisely, you can configure missions that use multiple landings. This is the stretch tank version of Blue Moon, which can soft land 6.5 metric tons onto the lunar surface. And this has an ascent vehicle on top. When I first saw the drawings of this a long time ago, I was like, my images of landers are all formed by the Apollo lander. And it, I was sure that those landing pads were too small. And I asked about that. And the answer is, these are not too small. The ones on the lunar Apollo lander are too big because we were very worried about how soft the lunar surface was. And it's just an example of how much more we know today so these will work just fine, don't worry. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. <laughs>